Hi, welcome to The Writing Engineer. Today, I'll be talking about a topic that you should know about if you're writing science fiction, fantasy, horror, dystopian, murder mystery, or really anything. Blood and guts. First, I would like to read to you a little passage, but be aware, this is going to be a little bit gory, so you can fast forward a bit if you don't like that type of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> when the lights came on, they revealed the man framed by an alcove of horror. It was Sam, or what was left of Sam. His body lay on the floor, tossed there like a discarded toy. His head lay a few feet away. The back of the skull, it was open. Bone and flesh seemingly exploded outward, and its sacred contents spilled carelessly onto the floor. The strange, dripping sound he had heard earlier was instantly and gruesomely illuminated. It was the sound of dripping blood. The entire corner where Sam's remains lay was covered in it. The floor, the walls, and the ceiling. The scarlet fluid was dripping into congealing puddles on the floor. The creature must have literally torn off Sam's head, causing the blood to fountain up and cover every surface. That is an excerpt from my first novel, Amara's Law. It's not all like that, but there are a few sections that are like that. Believe it or not, I didn't write that section from scratch. I actually did research. What the heck could you research for that, you might ask? Well, how about blood spatter patterns? How about blood pressures? How about forensic spurt patterns? I needed to know how blood behaved. So the way to do that was to look it up. And in case you wanted to know, yes, blood will actually fountain up out of the neck if the head is separated from the body. Just a fun little fact. The basis of my book, which is not all blood and guts, does deal with tiny little nanobots that float around in the bloodstream. I needed to know how blood behaved so that I could get the properties of these nanobots correct. So I gave myself a crash course in forensic blood research. I looked up books. I looked online. My search history is kind of a mess, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, I'll leave the name of the book and its ISBN number in the description box below after the video. And now, on to part two. Guts. We've all got them. Preferably, they stay on the inside, where nature intended. But, on the off chance that your story requires them to be, um, outside, it's good to know how that can happen. Fight scenes especially. Imagine this scenario. Your protagonist is in a fight. They're not very good at fighting, but they do know that a strike to the kidneys is both very painful and incapacitating. Well, where on the person should they strike? Do you know off the top of your head where the kidneys are located? Are you going to have them punched in the stomach or somewhere else? Because it's not in the stomach. Additionally, maybe you need someone to die slowly. Where is a good place to put a sword for this? A little research might reveal that a liver is a very good place to do this. The reason why? The liver needs a lot of blood. It's not going to kill you instantly like a stab to the neck, or decapitation, or stab to the heart, but it will kill you through, through blood loss. And the nice thing is that this dying soldier can maybe impart some cryptic words, maybe sending your protagonist on a quest, but then will die before being able to help the protagonist finish said quest. It's a great little device for imparting information while not using an info dump. Now the research that you do doesn't all have to be blood and guts. Sometimes it can be chemical of nature, in nature, like the ways chemicals interact with the body. Now for example, I needed my protagonist, named 13, to become unconscious rather quickly. The problem is she's got enhancements that allow her to heal extremely quickly. So you can't inject her with anything because she has metal for veins. Now, there is a substance called sevaflurane. It's an aerosol anesthetic. It's not used much anymore, but the point is that it exists. The chemical formula is known. It can probably be found in a textbook, maybe dealing with anesthetics. And someone sufficiently clever, and my protagonists are sufficiently clever, could manufacture this drug and use it in, say, a defense system. So, you don't have to make your entire book based in fact. 
there are certain elements in my book that I just don't bother to explain because they're really not important. But you should put in a few things that are believable so that your audience trusts you. So that when you pull them in a different direction, they're willing to follow along with you and accept what you're saying as the truth. At least until the end of the book. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up below. If you'd like to be notified immediately whenever I put up a new video, please click the subscribe button. I'm going to leave all my contact information, my website, my Twitter handle, my email address, in the description box below. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. The basis of my book, which is not all blood and guts. I can't remember. Squat! I'll read the... I'll leave the... So they will, when you, rather, believe it or not, it actually does. The blood in the human body is under, oh, son of a.